Morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me as we take a look at our forecast Thursday morning update on our forecast for the Friday night into Saturday uh, morning storm. Um, and uh, I'm definitely a little out of line, I think, with where some of the other forecasters are for this storm. I'm uh, skeptical as to how much snow I think we're really going to get out of this thing. I think we're going to get more sleep than a lot of people are thinking. I think there's a lot of precedent for this for this winter. Uh, the models have way over predicted all of these storms that have been similar to this one this winter. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, and if I'm wrong, you know, uh, sometimes that's the way it goes. But I want to give you what I really do think is going to happen. And uh, I feel like I've somewhat gotten a little more locked in here lately in terms of what the storms are doing this winter. Um, and so that's why I'm a little more confident to get a little further away from kind of consensus. But I do want to let you know that you're going to see other forecasts that are going to be higher on the snow totals than I am. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe they're going to be right. I hope they're right. I like the snow. So anyway, here's what's happening. Here's our system that's kind of swinging through this morning. We've changed over to kind of a sleety, rainy. It depends on exactly where you are elevation wise, whether you're snow or sleet or kind of freezing, rainy mess. This morning, that will come to an end relatively quickly this morning. Um, and then we have a continued boundary layer here, and then um, which is kind of setting the stage and waiting for energy to catch up to it here. And really going to get a storm wrapped up and going good here today and tomorrow over uh, the southern part of the United States. Um, this is going to bring a lot of severe weather across portions of the southeastern United States. There's going to be a lot of moisture involved in the system. Um, I, and uh, way back in the forecast, I was getting excited because one thing that's happened all winter is we've had systems track to our west. And when the pattern's been a little more favorable, we've transferred energy uh, and they've gone off and kept us snow. Most of the winter, they've actually just skyrocketed up into Canada and given us rain. But um, when we've been in a more wintry pattern, um, they've, they've transferred their energy. But as they've done that, they've often underperformed. And this one originally was looking like it might go to the coast and then ride up the coast totally, um, which is a, a storm track that sometimes happens. Um, hasn't happened at all this winter, but um, sometimes does happen. That's kind of your classic nor'easter path. And sometimes we get systems that go to our west and transfer the energy. This one is going to do that, but it's going to be late. That's what's happened all winter. The storms have not transferred their energy quick enough to give the coastal low the chance to really lock in our cold air, lock in the best forcing aloft. And so we've often had dry slots move in, um, and then we get kind of stuck in this sleety, messiness um, that doesn't really, that either is uh, moderate sleet or a lot of times it just sort of uh, the, the the forcing in the in the atmosphere dies and I think that's going to happen again and there's a couple models that aren't hinting at that I think they're under hinting at it but they are hinting at it all right let's take a look at what's going on in terms of radar across the country again you can see this boundary layer that's sort of the the boundary that is getting things started um, but originally what was happening was this front was really going to push colder air and the boundary was going to move to the coast. And that's why the storm is going to kind of wait and ride along the southern part of the United States and then ride up the coast. But what has happened here is the boundary, like has happened all winter, we're not really forcing the warm air out. Um, kind of almost too much uh, convection already going over. We're getting too much warmth kind of here across the southeast. And so that's going to take the original storm tracks going to head well to our west and then transfer off the coast. It's called the Miller B type storm for you weather nerds out there. That doesn't really matter, but um, it does uh, have some effects. So we're going to go through the progression of what the storm is doing here. Um, again, by Friday midday, um, we've got a system that is uh, kind of over south of Lake, Lake Michigan um, and uh, mostly rain at this point, strong thunderstorms along the cold front and kind of an area, a warm front that is giving us the hint of uh, some coastal development. Now, after even earlier this week, when I was a little more bullish on this storm, if you listen to my forecast, I was obviously was not giving out forecast totals, but I was thinking this storm was looking pretty significant. It looked like the energy might um, transfer very quickly off the coast. That The models keep pushing that back and back and back in terms of when the transfer happens, and that's why I'm getting more and more and more pessimistic in terms of big snow totals here across the southern Vermont. But um, this would be how it would happen, right? You usually have a warm front, and then you redevelop a new low pressure system here where you'd have a boundary layer, right? Um, a coastal boundary layer. But again, that has been happening slow this year. And there's probably some reasons, probably some uh, sea surface temperature reasons for that. There's certainly been some lack of cold air reasons for that, lack of snow cover over uh, really anything except for the mountains of New England. So um, that all of that kind of plays a role in not wanting and not having the temperature gradient be what it needs to really transfer that energy quickly. Some of it's just the overall pattern. It's just been that kind of winter. Um, as we head towards Friday evening, we are starting to get the hint of secondary low development here. 
Um, and so this is still earlier than a lot of systems have been this winter. So I think we will get a, we're not going to get completely skunked out of the storm, but it's still not really quick enough. And you can already see a dry slot starting to form between the two. That's been, that's happened several times this winter. Um, snow is by the evening starting to approach our area. By late evening, we will be light snow. Um, and, um, and uh, we could get a pretty good moderate burst of snow uh, by uh, late, late in the evening more like overnight as we head through southern Vermont. We do have an area of sleet already developing here um, across central Pennsylvania at that point. As we head towards Friday overnight, this is when we are going to get our accumulating snow. And we could have a pretty good layer. Um, what has happened, another reason, another thing that's happened is often when we've had these systems kind of running to the north, um, the, because the energy transfer is late, there's not great forcing here on this front end. And so what happens is it tends to thin out the, th the front end, the front thump of snow. Um, and so we don't even get like a burst of five or six inches before we change over to the sleet. And I think the same thing is going to happen here. So I think we get a couple inches of snow. Everybody gets a couple, two, three inches of snow. We'll talk about snowfall totals. And then we, then we have to start playing the game with the sleet. You can see, once again, dry slots start to move towards us. Um, and you're going to see by Saturday morning, I think that dry slot is significantly uh, coming up the uh, basically the Hudson River Valley um, and uh, up Route 7 and um, even where it doesn't get completely cut off here probably over southern Vermont um, enough warm air gets in aloft with that dry slot that it changes us over to sleep um, and basically by Saturday morning um, and then the wraparound snows on these have really not panned out um, so sometimes with these with these systems if you get really good energy your transfer um, it will help enhance actually some of the uh, the lift with the with the secondary low but this system is just not going to get going fast enough we are it is finally becoming the dominant low by Saturday morning and that will help us after after early morning change back to snow whatever's left but I think there's not going to be that much left so most of our accumulation is done by Saturday morning just kind of a sleety mess left early in the morning on Saturday um, and so travel will be tough on Saturday morning because it will be uh, kind of a mess. So uh, then as we head to whoops, we're going the wrong direction here. Saturday after by Saturday midday system is over. Uh, this is kind of a prime location for where you'd look for a storm track, but the storm is just getting going too late. And so we're not wrapping back in. Uh, we might have some flurries around Saturday afternoon, but nothing accumulating, I don't think. And um, chance better chance for some uh, snow across New Hampshire and uh, and southern Maine uh, as a result of this system. Um, it's not too late for them, but for us here in southern Vermont, I think it's mostly too late. Uh, so in terms of our overall forecast here for precipitation type, I think the sleet makes it almost all the way up through uh, the areas that I forecast. And north of that, I'm not sure exactly how much precipitation total-wise you're going to get. Um, although these will be the areas that get more snow. But um, I think the sleet definitely gets well north of Rutland uh, in Rutland County and basically pushes up towards, I think Killington probably gets into some sleep. Um, you get north of Route 4 and you start to get to a place where maybe not much sleep gets mixed in. Uh, as we head towards precipitation totals, again, these are going to be significantly lower. The National Weather Service is going for almost double these numbers in a lot of places. I think they're just... Uh, have missed the trend on what's been going on all winter with the storms, but I could be wrong. Again, if we get double these numbers, that would be great, but um, I don't think so. Uh, so two to three inches for most of the Route 7 corridor, also down in Brattleboro, up uh, up uh, along the Connecticut River Valley, up to about Bellows Falls, I would say maybe up to almost to Springfield, just two to three inches, three to five in general for a lot of the rest of us. Um, that's all comes before we get sleet. So we'll get the three to five relatively quickly overnight, um, and then you get sleet on top of it, and it doesn't really add up to anything. Um, and I think five to seven in some of the higher elevations, uh, you hit towards, I think, uh, you know, Kimo has a chance to get five to seven. I think five, six, seven inches of snow for Killington as well. There's going to be sleep mixed in there as well, though. So, again, uh, just uh, continuing the pattern. It is at least more wintry, um, but, you know, we have just not had great systems. The pattern has just been terrible all winter. So, um, yeah, that's really what's going on. Um, snow should start. I'll have more details on exact timing and things, but snow should start somewhere between eight and I think 10 p.m. roughly on Friday evening. And we should be wrapped up with accumulating slushy snow sleet uh, by uh, late morning to around noon or so on Saturday, I think. Flurry's still in the afternoon, but I think that uh, road conditions will improve. So it's really the morning on Sunday, or Saturday, I should say, that's tough travel. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, certainly feel free to ask. Um, again, these are definitely lower numbers than a lot of people are going to see, than you're going to see from a lot of people today. Uh, but I think it's the trend in the way the models are going. And again, if I'm wrong, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, but um, it is going to still be slippery. So in terms of practicalness, whether we get these or double Ds, um, it, it means not a lot, except for the skiing will be a lot better if it's all snow. Um, so hopefully that happens, but I don't think so. Okay, I will be, um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel before, I'd encourage you to do so. Uh, also, if you have not, uh, if you're interested in becoming a patron, that's uh, they help support 
the channel financially, help with all the graphics and things like that, me getting the graphics packages, uh, the radar packages, the model packages, all that kind of stuff, help uh, support that kind of stuff and improve the quality of these videos. Um, if you're interested in that, you can uh, check out the link in the description below. And otherwise, I will be back tomorrow morning with a look at your weekend forecast, which will obviously have a big update on this storm and we'll have uh, more details on exact time. Like all right, thanks for supporting the channel and I'll be back tomorrow morning.